Excellent! Hey everyone and welcome to Paul's Hardware. Today I'm going to be doing an unboxing and overview of this Thermaltake Water 2.0 Extreme 240mm closed loop CPU cooler. Alright guys, here's a look and uh, I hope you can hear me okay. I've kind of repositioned the microphone and I have no idea how well it's going to work. But um, if you can't hear me, I apologize. Anyway, uh, here's the uh, retail box of course. Let me just give a quick once over this one. We have top of the line liquid cooler equipped with power and performance. No refill refills needed, this being a closed loop cooler of course. 240 millimeter radiator doubles your cooling surface and universal socket compatibility including LGA 2011, which I will be using it for uh, in my other video. Uh, of course, we have the cooler here. We've got the block and the pump. We've got the tubes connecting them, white fan uh, accents, etc. Uh, let's see what else. Here's a chart on the side telling you what kind of performance you can expect. So look, here's a Intel, uh, the the stock cooler that comes with the Intel. So it's they're kind of comparing this one to a free cooler or effectively free. This is a Core i7-975 at 4 gigahertz under 100% load running at 94 degrees Celsius and then they installed this and it runs uh, 20 degrees cooler, 74 degrees Celsius. Lower temperatures are better which I think most of you guys already know. Uh, let me run down the specifications here. Sorry it's a little bit crooked but uh, we have the water block which is made of copper uh, we have a uh, motor speed of 2800 RPMs, rated voltage of 12 volts, and a current of uh, 220 milliamps. Also the fan, or two fans I should say. Uh, the fans that are included have a fan dimension of 120 by 120 by 25 millimeters. Fan speed of between 1200 and 2000 RPMs, noise level of 27.36 decibels. Uh, that's maximum. Uh, voltage again, 12 volts, uh, current of 0.5 amps. Maximum airflow 81.32 cubic feet per minute, a 4-pin PWM connector, which is another reason why I like the fans that are included here. They are PWM, of course. Uh, and then for the radiator down here, dimensions of 270 by 120 by 38.3. It is a thicker radiator, radiator than you might find, for example, on the H100. Uh, made of aluminum. Uh, it's, aluminum's not quite as, as good as copper for the actual radiator material. However, uh, most of the closed loop solutions that you find out there right now are made of aluminum. Uh, also, tubing length of 326 millimeters. Uh, tubing material is made of rubber. Total weight of 1,150 grams. Smart info here on the back of the box. We have a powerful cooling fans, of course, two of them included. Uh, fan control software. Also, the high performance water block with the copper base. Uh, high reliability pump. High efficiency radiator. And then some extra info here on the features. I'm not going to read over all of those, but I will talk about the socket support LGA 2011, 1366, 1156, 1155, 775, and then uh, that's for Intel. For AMD, we have FM1, AM3+, AM3, AM2+, and AM2. And uh, since it's FM1, it will also fit on FM2. Although, let's be honest, guys, if anyone's dropping something like this onto uh, uh, an FM1 or FM2 socket processor, that's not really going to be the best use of it. I'll just be honest. I mean, maybe if you're overclocking the bejesus out of a, like in the internal GPU or something like that, I guess maybe. But uh, I would recommend this more for your high end overclock, you know, 8 core AMDs or uh, the uh, higher end Intel overclock processors because you're really only going to be making use of this radiator if you're actually overclocking. Other than that, you, you, I mean, you could have it run really, really low RPMs and really quiet, but there's other cheaper solutions that would allow you to do that. Otherwise, anyway, let's uh, get into the box. All right, now uh, I've actually already, sorry, I just stepped on a squeaky toy. Uh, I've actually already taken this out and I was doing a little messing around with it just to sort of give myself some familiarity with it before I got into the video. So sorry if this is a re-unboxing. Uh, here's the user's manual, lots of different languages, including English, of course, uh, but they're gonna walk you through the installation steps. It's pretty, Pretty straightforward and it's also pretty blasted out right now so I'm not sure if you guys can even read it. Anyway, there's your user's manual. Here is the radiator and pump all in one unit. Now one thing I find to be pretty kind of funny I would say about these all-in-one loops is really there's like two companies that make them. There's actually maybe a third now because I believe Cooler Master has started actually manufacturing these themselves but up till now every, almost, just about every single one of these that you will see is made either by Ace Tech or by Coolit, and they're just rebranded by other companies. So this one is actually manufactured by Ace Tech, rebranded by Thermaltake, 
uh, but they do provide the support for it. They do also handle the software. They're going to be um, your go-to for the manufacturer if you need any, uh, t you know, if you need to return it or anything like that. Um, so Thermaltake is standing behind this product, of course, and they have done, uh, you know, requested Ace Tech to do some specialization with it uh, to their specifications. So um, not all uh, closed loop coolers are alike, even if they may uh, be made by the, the same company. Anyway, uh, again here, nice thicker radiator. This is a 38 millimeter radiator, radiator as opposed to the, I believe, 25 millimeters is a bit more the standard. So I like that. More more surface area, more cooling, better overclocks, more stability. Uh, nice long tubing length here. I like the flexible rubber uh, tubing that they have here. I find it to be a little bit more attractive than the kind of corrugated look that you see on some of them. Uh, nice solid uh, water block. Again, this is a mounting solution I've seen in quite a few other Ace Tech coolers. It's pretty straightforward. It's not like super easy, but I mean, the mounting CPU coolers is, has always been kind of the biggest pain in the butt of any uh, CPU installation or computer build process. But here's a look at this. Uh, you have a USB lead coming off of here, and that's to connect to your motherboard so that uh, you can control this via the software. Uh, you also have a three pin connector there that's going to go to your CPU. Uh, power that's going to provide power to the pump. Uh, you also have two PWM four pin connectors coming off of that and that's to plug in the two fans. Uh, so pretty straightforward as far as assembly and get, getting all your connectors connected goes. Let's look at the rest of the components. Get two of these fans. Now, as far as fans goes, um, usually the ones that they provide with the closed loop coolers are decent enough. Uh, usually they provide enough static pressure to move air over the over the cooler. Often by upgrading the fans you can actually significantly upgrade the performance of the cooler itself. I'm going to start off using these. They're black and white and they're actually going to match perfectly with uh, the black and white case. Or it's mostly a black case with some white highlights, uh, the Fractal Design R4. Um, so I'm going to start off with these, see how they go, and then I, I might end up switching them out, I'm not sure. Uh, again, four pin connector, which I always like. PWM is Superior to three pin connectors in most respects. Here's your second fan because of course there are two and uh, Last of all of course you have all your mounting hardware and stuff So longer screws there to go through and uh, mount the fans to the case or mount the fans to the radiator Depending on what the case may be you have some uh, longer adapters here I'm pretty sure these are the socket 2011 ones, so I will be needing to use those and then here's a look uh, at the actual uh, retention sort of socket. So this this is, this is actually set up for a, a standard uh, Intel socket right now, like an 1155 or an 1156. Uh, you put these little plastic bits here together, you pop those through, and then those mount straight through to the back plate. Back plate, which is right here, which already has the adhesive strips on it. Again, I kind of went halfway through the, the uh, installation process with this, so you can see the adhesive strips there. These actually make it really easy to line that up. These are th different holes depending on what socket you're using for 1155 or uh, 1366, or I believe 775, yeah, so 775, 1155, or 1156, and 1366. They're all labeled on there. Stick that on the back, and then uh, when you feed the little plunger guys down through uh, from the socket, they simply make contact with those and then you bolt it in, secure everything nice and tight. And these, uh, actually I like, I like, I do like the design on these because you can hand tighten them, but uh, really to get them down securely I would recommend grabbing a Phillips head screwdriver and actually mounting that in there because uh, I found in quite a few situations you it can feel like it's hand tightened, but actually if you get a screwdriver and continue to tighten it, it will uh, drop down by another probably couple couple millimeters, and that is important because this will be putting the pressure on the actual block right there, and the pressure with that against the actual CPU heat spreader is what gives you good contact there and good cooling performance. So there's the mounting hardware. What else do we have in here? Uh, Water 2.0 Extreme software included on disk. I imagine you can also download that from the Thermaltake website. I believe that's warranty information. And then uh, here's your AMD mounting hardware, which again is pretty much the same as Intel, just you get the sort of rectangular uh, setup there. So you will need to remove the back plate for an AMD motherboard and uh, re replace it with that. And then apart from that, your uh, actual mounting mechanism is pretty much the same. It's also easy to drop.
And that's going to wrap it up for this video, guys. Once again, this has been the Thermaltake Water 2.0 Extreme 240mm Closed Loop CPU Cooler. Uh, just FYI, I will be installing this in a build that will be featured in an upcoming build video here on my Pulse Hardware YouTube channel. I am installing it in a Fractal R4, uh, Fractal Define R4 computer case. I'm hoping that the kind of black and white theme here will match with the existing black and white theme of that computer case. I'm also hoping with the thickness of the radiator and the fans that it will be able to fit in there up uh, above my motherboard. I'm pretty sure it will, but who knows? We'll find out in the future. That's all for this one. Uh, if you'd like to find more tech videos, you can find them on my Pulse Hardware YouTube channel. Don't forget to subscribe while you're there. We'll see you all in the next video.